Hello and welcome to devlog number 8. So the last devlog was about the multiplayer test that I did with uh, three other players. And what I really spent the last two weeks doing was taking all the information that I gathered from that test and making improvements to just the general usability of the game, figuring out how it should play, and fixing a bunch of bugs that we found. But the most obvious first change that you'll notice is that the map has completely changed. I mentioned in a previous devlog that the map that I had, the asteroid thicket map, was just a five minute script to populate a giant 3D grid with asteroids, just so that I could have some kind of terrain to test in. I never really liked it, I didn't intend for it to stick around in the long term. What I really wanted was a, a map that had an interesting structure to it. And so a while back I did this concept painting where I just kind of envisioned this really massive asteroid that had just fractured into a bunch of really giant pieces. And uh, I thought that it would be a really cool, tight space to fight in. Uh, I thought it would give a lot of really interesting terrain. And so it's a lot nicer than the previous map because there's these large open spaces, but also big substantial pieces of cover. And I really just wanted something where you could really feel the scale of the ships versus the environment. I really am not a big fan of the sci-fi trope of every ship needs to be enormous or it's not cool. like. Star Destroyers or Super Star Destroyers or kilometers long and I think it's just ridiculous. I want these ships to feel like they're tiny little tin cans lost in the void. And I think that this map does a really good job of giving you that feeling because just watching your ships crawl over the surface of the asteroids, I think it's really cool. Uh, the gas clouds don't do anything right now, they're just aesthetic, but eventually they'll do things like distort sensors so it'll be a little bit of an extra addition to the considerations when you're flying around this map. There's a weird bug here where I can see the velocity and height indicators for the enemy ships even though I don't have tracks on, on them. Uh, it, they came in and out, I don't know what's causing that, but I'm pretty sure they were experiencing that too, which did cut down on the initial hunt phase because we just drove straight towards each other. I do want to make clear though that this is not my work. I did the original concept painting, but I, I tried to model it a couple times, and I just really didn't have any luck at making it look any good at all. So I reached out to an old friend and asked if he would be able to do it, and he produced this, and it looks awesome. I love it. I'm so happy with it. There is some work that needs to be done on the textures still, because even with 4096 textures, they're still really low resolution at this scale. So maybe do something in a. I'm going to do something in a shader to um, layer on a procedural kind of um, tessellation on top of it but that's something that I'll have to do for the future. And he's still working on adding a little bit more extra detail to it. But overall, I'm really happy with it and it was a lot of fun to play in. And speaking of playing, what you're seeing here is I did a match today against two of my testers, which may not have been very fair simply because I'm so familiar with the controls and they haven't gotten a lot of time to get used to them yet. So I'm probably not gonna do this too often and I'll probably just, for the most part, watch them play against each other. But it was fun to actually get to play against somebody. It was me with four ships versus them with two ships each, so it was four versus four. This one sadly did not go as smoothly as the previous one did. Almost immediately we got hit with a bunch of errors, including a really rare race condition between the server and client that I thought I had fixed, but since it happens so rarely, it's really hard to pin down and debug. But I'm, I think I fixed it now. I reverted a bunch of my custom scene change handling code to do something a lot more vanilla and then do all of the special stuff that I was going to do in the actual game scene instead. So I think that it should be fixed now. But unfortunately, the fact that there were a number of errors means that the game didn't actually get to end properly. So I have a new battle report that I added to the end of the game, but unfortunately because of all the exceptions that we were experiencing, uh, we couldn't actually exit because an exception was preventing us from leaving the game, so we couldn't see the battle report at the end of this, which I'm kind of really sad about because I wanted to see how it actually went down. But so it goes. That's life in pre-alpha, I guess. Let's talk about actual gameplay changes. So after reviewing the footage from the last multiplayer test over and over again, I think I watched each one three or four times, to kind of see how the players were using the interface and where they were getting hung up, I made a couple major changes in terms of how things work to make it more streamlined, to make it so that you can still micro your ships, but it's less cumbersome, significantly less cumbersome. So the first major change that I noticed was how players used formations. And that was, 
if you had ships in a formation, generally they were always doing the same thing. So let's say you have three ships flying in formation. You have a target that you want to shoot at. The way that that used to work is you'd have to click on each ship in the formation one at a time, right click, select weapon, click on the track to target it, then go to the next ship, right click, select weapon, and it was very cumbersome. It definitely didn't lend itself to any kind of split second decision making, and it also really didn't scale well when you had more than two or three ships in your formations. Now in order to streamline that and make it less cumbersome, I did a couple things. And the first simplest one is, if you right click on a track, it's a reasonable assumption to make that the player wants to shoot at that track. And so now, with whatever ship you have selected, if you right click a track, it will automatically open the weapons window. As I'm doing here, uh, or trying to do rather, one thing that I uh, noticed in this test is that with the jumping tracks on low accuracy or when things are far away, it makes it really difficult to right click on the track. But you can see that when that menu opened, it said targeting track number whatever. And so it automatically opens up the, the weapons list for me and then I can choose the weapon that I want to target at that track. So that speeds up targeting a lot. When it comes to the unity of purpose that players often used when it came to uh, formations, I made it so that you can issue orders to entire formations as a unit, as a single contiguous unit. So you see that when I right click there, it said formation, three ships. So the way that works is if you have any ship in the formation selected, it can be any one, and you shift right click, it will open up the orders menu for that entire formation, and it will group all the weapons of the same type. So all the missiles, all the guns, regardless of their names that were set in the fleet editor, you can do your own gun grouping there which means that it's now really easy to basically target weapons for your entire formation. And so what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to wrap a missile salvo around this asteroid so that I can come up behind their ships. And what you'll see here is one of the issues with this system, and I haven't quite figured out how I want to get around it in the code, but basically the way it works is the order is replicated to all these ships. So, so my goal here was to fire 10 or so missiles at that area just to give them something to think about um, but because that order was replicated to all three ships in the fleet all of which have missile launchers uh, I ended up firing 30 missiles which I didn't want to do so I basically dumped my entire missile load or a, a large portion of my missile load in this single salvo which was a mistake and I know about this bug but I just I just forgot about it in the heat of the moment one major thing to note about missiles is the difficulty of targeting them in this fashion. So I don't think that I really got hit by a single missile in this entire match because, because I was staying mobile the whole time and it's really hard to gauge missile flight time versus where you think the target's gonna be. And I think the solution for that is some kind of graduated display of where the ship could be. I don't wanna make just a lead pip because that would make it too easy, but a bunch of marks or, co or a cone of probability for where it could be at 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then you can, based on the flight time that you know it's gonna be, because it tells you on the widget, you can figure out roughly where it's gonna be. And so the bright side of me firing my entire missile payload into this one ship is that I definitely did kill it. But the number of missiles that it took to get that kill is absurd. And it really cuts to the heart of the major issue with the game right now, which is that there's a major discrepancy in the balancing that I've done. So the weapons are balanced for the size of the ship that they're on. The cannons do the amount of damage that I want a cannon that goes on a frigate to do. Same with the missiles. But the frigates are balanced as if they're battleships. So they'll shrug off a dozen missile hits as if it was nothing. And I've done that. I kind of fell into that trap simply because it's the only class of ship in the game right now and there's only a few of them. So I didn't want it so that the matches were going to end too quickly. But really what it's doing is that you've got a frigate's quantity of weapons firing at a, a ship that has a battleship level of integrity. And it just means that nothing's really going to go anywhere. And it can make the matches drag on for quite a while. So I really need to look at fixing that. I need to make the frigates more fragile. I need to bring the amount of hit points in line with what that I think that ship should be. Because a frigate shrugging off a dozen missile hits and then still being able to fight is not the direction I want this game to go in. 
two, three, maybe four missile hits for a cruise missile like this should be all that this ship can take. Now, in another effort to kind of reduce the durability of the ships, I wasn't planning to implement any kind of crew mechanics for a little while, but I kind of had to in order to make it so that the ships were more vulnerable. So now there's a number of conditions added for when the ships are considered eliminated. So there's the CIC engines and reactor being destroyed in different proportions that I mentioned in the last devlog, but now um, the damage control teams are vulnerable to being killed and so are the crew members in every compartment. And so when you take a hit, there's a probability chance now that a crew member can die and then when the crew hits zero, that ship then becomes eliminated. And now finally, the last quality of life user interface thing that I had to fix in the last multiplayer test was that I noticed that a lot of the players were struggling with figuring out why their ships weren't acting on orders. And so if the CIC or the command module of the ship is destroyed or disabled or whatever, the ship can't execute any orders, but the players didn't realize that. Maybe they were seeing the little red chevrons in the ship list or on the status bar over the ship that indicates that the ship has no command module, that it can't receive orders, but when you're issuing orders, you you might not notice that, and so I needed to make it foolproof, because what they were doing was they were issuing the same order to the same ship over and over and over, and wondering why it wasn't executing it. And so what it does now is when you right-click on a ship that can't receive orders, everything will be grayed out except for the circle, which is red, and it says not receiving, which is, I think, a pretty blunt way of getting the point across. And I think that will significantly cut down on the problem of why are my ships not doing what I'm telling them to do. Everything else that I did over the last two weeks was fixing the long list of bugs that I found in the previous multiplayer test, uh, obviously introducing a couple more that we found during this one, which I now have written down and I'm going to get to fixing. I already fixed the most egregious one, which is what I did immediately after the test finished, which was uh, hammering out that the cause of that race condition and finally fixing it, I'm pretty sure. So really what I'm, I'm coming down to now is with that issue fixed, with the battle report in, with the end of the match, with the elimination conditions and the game end conditions, even if we didn't get to that in this particular test because of that exception, the game is a complete circle now. You create your fleet, you join a match, you fight the enemy, if the ships weren't as durable as they are, the match would end, and then you would see the battle report, and then you'd go back to the main menu, and then do it all over again. So now that that is done, I think that aside from the long list of bugs that I need to fix, what I need to start doing now is fleshing out the availability of the mechanics that I already have. So right now there's only one class of ship. There's two types of cannon, which are really the same cannon, but one has two barrels and one has one barrel. There's one type of missile. So what I'm going to do over the next couple weeks, and it's going to be more than two, because this is going to be the last devlog for a little while, since I'm about to start moving off of Hawaii. So I'm about to get very busy, but in my free time during all of that, I'm going to get to more actual game design rather than game implementation stuff. So figuring out what other types of missiles there are going to be. It's going to involve some code implementation, but different seeker types, different warhead types. Um, I really want to get a Corvette and a destroyer model in to kind of spread out the availability of different ship classes with different roles, uh, add a couple different cannon types, bullet types, and uh, expand the number of modules to make it so that there's not just one or two viable fittings for the frigate. And so I think that that will take me into the next couple weeks with all of the other stuff that I'm going to have to do with my move. And then from there, we will see where it goes. So that is my update. Thank you for watching.